Does child minding bring more freedom? freedom? Waiting to, uh, uh, patiently to speak to us this morning is Chief Executive of Child Minding Ireland, Bernadette Orbinski. Good morning to you, Bernadette. How are you? Hi, Alan. Grand, we, thank you. Grand. We will not ask you to get on a high Nelly army for that <laughs> matter, but we wish Leslie the best of luck with it. Yeah, Although, it sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. And, 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 yeah. and I'm sure you were listening there with interest. Over €300,000 raised for, uh-huh. for Tomlin. Incredible sum of money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Right, you have a new campaign with Child Mining Ireland. Can you outline what it is and what the focus of the campaign is, please? Yeah, well, just to give you a little bit of background, Alan, um, child minders are self-employed child care providers. They work in their own homes. And it's a relationship-based form of child care. And children often stay with the same child minder from babyhood through national school and right into secondary school. And just to give you some idea of the scale of the sector, there's an estimated 88,000 children being minded by 35,000 child minders. So it's a huge sector. And the reason we've started this campaign, Child Minding is Different, is we're waiting for a child minding action plan. The department is currently writing it on the back of a working group that um, looked at the reforms and supports needed for the child minding sector. Yeah. So it's just really, um, it's cool, child minding is different. And the reason for that is we um, got feedback from, five, uh, from 19 different um, child minding consultation workshops around the country. We were in Donegal to Kerry and Tala to Castle Bar and as many places in between as possible. So we've got direct feedback from the child minders and we think it absolutely exemplifies the sort of work they do and we've only highlighted activities that's not typically associated with centre-based care. And it really came across that child minding is protecting childhood. Um, and it involves relationships not just with the child and the uh, child minder but also the child's family and the family of the child minder that came across really strongly. Um, so it has all the positive attributes of an extended family in its own right. You've got your own website as well, uh, Bernadette, and, and one of the myths that you, you've looked at is that a child minder will replace the parent or parents in a child's affection. You've looked at this in detail. What have you found? Yes. Well, that's absolutely not the case. I mean, I think especially sometimes for first-time parents, that's an understandable anxiety they have if they're going back to work and leaving the child with um, somebody else to mind it, whether that be a grandparent or a child minder or into a crash or whatever. Um, It's a natural anxiety, but children know very clearly who their parents are and child minders very much, you know, refer to the mummy and daddy and whoever um, the the child's family is made up of. And they work very hard to ensure that there's no confusion in the child's mind. You know, they're in Jane's house today or Maura's house tomorrow or, you know, it's very clear. It's something that child minders obviously watch out for and it's about reassuring the parents about that as well. So what you're saying is it's offering family support. You shouldn't be wary of it or, or think that they're, you're, they're going to replace your affections in your child's heart. But you exactly. also want to talk about the fact that freedom that child minding brings in the sense that yeah, the children absolutely. can be brought to the parks to play um, yeah. and uh, I mean, the, activities. The quotes, the quotes are lovely. I mean, it's you know, you can hear somebody saying, it's actually, they are direct quotes from the child minders, you know, go for a walk, see where the road brings us. Let's go out and play in the rain, we won't melt. I have freedom, I can say yes if a child wants to go out and play or go for a walk because I don't have set times for things. Yeah. I know it's hard to wake up, let's sit on a couch and read a story. A okay. poorly or pettish, you know, they're beautiful, they're, they really are home from home settings. And we're going to run a series of um, campaigns. This first one is showing that it's a child-led care. Those are the quotes I, I read you from that, that they really clearly demonstrate that you can um, be flexible depending on what the child wants to do. And it's really important because every child is different and every family is different. And hmm. the fact that child minders are all different means that they can meet that and that Bernadette, you've, you, you said you're sharing, it's true, a series of videos, isn't it? Yes, yes. We've sent you one. I don't know if you've had a chance to put it up on your social media. We can send you another one. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a lovely video just um, really emphasising the positivity of child minding and um, what ch- children and their families and their communities gain from it. Yeah, OK. Um, what are the negatives? Are there negatives or what are the negatives fed back to you? 
Yeah, well, the negatives, I suppose, is there hasn't been any investing um, investment in childminding, any new investment in childminding for years and years and years. And it's a very anxious sector at the moment because they know that regulation and registration will be coming. And so it's about making sure that that's appropriate for childminders, that it's not... It's really important that it's acknowledged that it's different from centre-based care. You know, what what's right for a centre-based, you know... Um, organization is not going to be inappropriate for a home setting so it's really trying to raise that profile and call for resources to support child minders um, into a new system and support them and nurture it and yeah. protect it because yeah. absolutely vital and uh, every child minder has to be guarded vetted are in the process of vetting and fully insured for child minding is that correct no it's not, um, it not? our members are at child minding ireland and um but they're often self-regulating in a vacuum. I mean, that's one of the reasons why this working group was established. At the moment, anybody can set up as a child minder. There's no requirement hmm. um, for guard of vetting. Okay. Um, it depends on the number of children that you, you mind. There is a requirement to register a TUSLA um, if you're minding um, four or more preschoolers. Or um, would you see that as a priority to get each child minder guard of vetted? Well, I, I mean, I really think, you know, it's a re- reasonable uh, for parents to expect somebody who's being paid to mind their child as a minimum yeah. as guard of vetting. Yeah. Um, we would also ask our members to have um, insurance for child minding. Most of them have paediatric first aid, you know, just sensible, appropriate things that are going to support the child minder in their work. You know, it's about getting the level right. Mm-hmm. All right, Bernadette, I have to leave it there for the moment. Do you want to direct people towards those videos again before we let you go? Yes, um, please do. Um, It's childminding.ie is the website or support at childminding.ie if anybody's got any questions or wants any additional information. Um, And we have a telephone number as well, 01-287-8466. And it's manned by former childminders. So you'll be talking to a friendly, friendly voice at the other end of the line. Lovely to talk to you. Uh, thank you for thank taking you our call are. this morning. That was Bernadette Orbinski, Chief Executive of Child Mining Art.